celebrate B-movie gems better than big-budget films. B-movies have been looked down upon more often than not. It's considered to be a class of movies that feed upon cheap thrills to get audiences to the theaters. The budget is usually the determining factor, and for B-grade movies, the budget is considerably lower than mainstream films. So, they can't afford the biggest of stars, and the production values are below par in comparison to the A-grade big-budget movies. However, there are some B-movies that overcome the handicap of financial constraints and deliver surprisingly good content. In fact, in some instances, they have been even better than the big-budget films that faltered, despite the fat budget. In this video, we take a look at some of these B-movie gems that surpass the expectations of the viewers, although they were plagued by their restricted monetary reserve. The following movies are no less than the so-called blockbusters with substandard content and are definitely worth a watch. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Trancers, 1984. The story is based in a futuristic world where a cop named Jack Death is in pursuit of an evil criminal. This twisted criminal, Whistler, has the ability to transform people into a zombie-like creature by using his hypnotic powers. To evade arrest, he manages to escape via time travel and ends up in Los Angeles in the 1980s. But Jack is in hot pursuit and follows him back in time to deliver justice. B-movies are to Charles Band what cooking is to Gordon Ramsay. He aces the direction in this film, as well as purposely including some cheesy bits, like the hero lighting a match against his own teeth. There is refreshingly tongue-in-cheek humor, along with some amusing one-liners that make this movie an entertaining watch. Some cool gadgets are on display, and the time-stopping wristwatch is particularly fun to watch. With the minimal budget, the special effects are not much to speak of, but the makers mask the flaw with some brilliant action sequences. Tim Thomerson is impressive as the gritty cop, and Helen Hunt makes for beautiful eye candy. Overall, this film is definitely in the league of some A-list movies with such amazing content around them. This film is directed by Stuart Gordon, a man well known for involving a lot of violence and gore in his movie. Basket Case, 1982. Dwayne Bradley roams around with a big basket that carries his surgically removed Siamese twin. It is physically deformed to a point where you can barely call it human, but it harbors plans to kill all those it blames. The doctor who performed the operation is one of the primary targets, but Dwayne falls in love with the receptionist in his office and is willing to start over for a positive life. The freaky twin manages to escape, and now the brothers must have a final showdown. With a bizarre premise and a funny script, the makers purposely make things ridiculous. For instance, the Siamese twin brother is made to look like a twisted lump of fat with two clawed arms and a half-human face. This movie is a great example of exploitation cinema, where there is ample gore, some sleazy moments, and tones of unfiltered humor. The lower quality grainy film stock adds to the seediness of the film, and the acting by Kevin Van Henterick is surprisingly good. If you're part of the special fan base for bad movies, this one is too hilarious to miss out on. <laughs> Street Trash, 1987. The heart of a B-movie is often a crazy plot. As for Street Trash, the story takes you through some strange reactions to the consumption of some contaminated alcoholic beverages. 
An unaware liquor store owner sells these bottles to the customers, who consume it and start melting. Two homeless guys are trying their best to fight the effects of this toxic booze as they face off with a Vietnam War vet who has some sociopathic tendencies. When the poster of the movie shows a melted transient's head in a toilet bowl, it is time to stay away for those who are easily disturbed by gore. The plot is a testimony to the fact that this film is not intended to be taken seriously. Even then, the camera work is precise, and the cast, including the likes of R. L. Ryan, put together a great performance. There are some disturbing scenes, such as when a cop beats up a man inside of a men's room and vomits on him. There is a hilarious shoplifting scene that will leave you in stitches. To enjoy absurdity in its best form, go for this movie and you won't be disappointed. Night of the Creeps, 1986. An alien experiment goes wrong and crashes into the Earth, infecting humans. These are brain parasites that enter through the mouth and turn the humans into zombie-like killing machines. A fraternity member who was infected was frozen, but around 30 years later, two boys thaw the dead body, allowing the alien slugs in his brain to function again. Can they get away with it this time? Credit is due to the makers for picking an original plot and presenting it in style. Apart from the low-budget production, there is no way to tell that this is a B-movie. Even the special effects in use are top-notch. The scene where the alien slugs race along the ground is unnerving. Tom Atkins does a good job in the role of a detective, while Jill Whitlow and Jason Lively are perfect in their roles. The movie plays homage to the sci-fi horror and zombie flicks from the 50s. The script is witty, but the plot also has an amount of suspense and thrill as you wait in anticipation for the climax. Night of the Creeps deserved better recognition than it received, and it's a pity that such a brilliant film by Fred Decker is so underrated. Nemesis, 1992. The story is based on a futuristic society where information terrorists are a great threat to the societal order. Alex is a part human and part cyborg cop in the LAPD who quits the force when he questions his humanity. But he is given a final mission that is to bring in his old colleague, who is about to provide some sensitive data to the terrorists. While going about his task, Alex uncovers a much bigger conspiracy that makes him question his allegiance. Albert Pune is no stranger when it comes to providing us with some amazing sci-fi and horror movies. With Nemesis, he delivers yet another eminently watchable film that is complete with amazing visuals and innovative ideas. The action scenes are the real highlights of this movie, as you will witness some refreshing sequences using high tech and some cool weapons. The apartment shootout scene is stunning, where Alex shoots at the floor to make a hole big enough for him to drop down, and does so for two more floors. This movie is high in sex appeal with Deborah Shelton oozing elegance. Oliver Gruner is perfectly suitable in his role as Alex. If you are an admirer of quality B movies, Nemesis is going to be a memorable watch. Maniac Cop, 1988. A cop in uniform is murdering innocent people on the streets of New York. The police department tries hard to find the identity of this mysterious killer, and the investigation is headed by Frank. The killer, however, manages to frame a young cop as the prime suspect and leads to his arrest. But his girlfriend and Frank together embark upon a mission to get to the bottom of things. Can they put an end to the maniac cop? You have seen movies about cops being a protector, and this one clearly deviates from the usual. 
While it is essentially an action slasher film, it is rich in terms of storytelling and has a talented cast consisting of Bruce Campbell, Tom Atkins, and Loreen Landon. This film has loads of killing and some crazy action sequences to spice things up. You have everything from high-speed car chases to explosive shootouts. The makers focus on creating a chilling aura with the rustling sounds and by dwelling in the uneasy vibes surrounding a metropolis. The last 15 minutes of the movie are sure to keep you on the edge of your seat. Maniac Cop is fun in a messy way, but you will certainly enjoy this peppy flick. Voyage of the Rock Aliens, 1984. What's a B-movie without an outrageous plot? In this film, they tell us a story about aliens who are looking for the source of rock and roll music and end up in the mythical town of Spielberg in the USA. They discover a gang of teenagers who are led by Dee Dee, and trouble starts brewing when the leader of the aliens falls for Dee Dee. This movie is about the best features of the 80s coming together to take you down the nostalgia lane. The idea was to make a movie as a spoof on the 60s beach movies, but the makers added some modern twists. Despite the cheesy plot, this is a life-changing film for many. You will be laughing hysterically at some of the scenes, such as when a female victim helps the homicidal maniac to repair his chainsaw. Pia Zadora is a delightful presence on screen, and as it turns out, a talented singer as well. If you appreciate the music of the 80s, there are some soulful tunes, such as When the Rain Begins to Fall, which is a duet performance. They don't make movies like this anymore, so watch it to relive the golden era of B-movies. Head of the Family, 1996. The plot of the movie is exactly like the title. It's about the head that has a tiny body and controls the rest of the family with its psychic powers. The family consists of some misshapen freaks who grab hold of unsuspecting travelers and dissect them to perform their gory experiments. A cheating couple plans to involve this dysfunctional family to get rid of the lady's husband, but things do not go as planned. Let us clarify one thing first. This movie is sexier than it is scary. This B-movie is trash at its best, complete with cheap special effects and some sleazy scenes. With ex-porn star Jacqueline Lavelle in the mix of things, you can expect things to get raunchy, and they do. The movie doesn't take itself seriously and pokes fun at the entire genre. The ladies in the film lose their clothes at every opportunity, and there are some creepy characters who make it fun to watch. The giant head is plausibly done, and overall, the special effects are not disappointing. Don't bail on this movie if crazy horror comedies tickle your funny bone. I'm gonna get him. Ugh. Class of Newcomb High, 1986. There is a high school beside a nuclear plant, and the pupils at the school start acting weirdly. It all starts after getting some contaminated drugs from one of the workers in the plant. A young couple, Warren and Chrissy, get increasingly suspicious about some foul play, and their suspicions are proved to be true when Chrissy gives birth to a mutant who starts eating everyone at school. Can they stop their killer kid? Gory violence, dark humor, and gratuitous nudity are the three aspects that make this rank among the most loved B-movies. This is one of the earlier movies by Troma Entertainment and bears their trademark style of filmmaking. The action sequences have a typical mercurial style, such as when Warren punches one of the Cretans through the mouth into the chest. Logic goes out the window barely 15 minutes into the movie, but the attention to detail despite the budgetary constraints is praiseworthy. The creature effect in use to show Chrissy's mutant fetus is hilarious. If shock horror with a generous dose of dark comedy is to your liking, go for this movie 
and enjoy the show. The Nest, 1988. As if cockroaches weren't disgusting and scary enough to deal with, you now have mutant cockroaches. This movie shows a biological experiment gone wrong, which ends up producing some meat-eating mutant roaches. These horrific creatures invade a peaceful island community and butcher its citizens. A sheriff, scientist, and the mayor's daughter come together to kill off these mutant cockroaches. The creature design steals the show in this movie, and the scene with the mayor roach transformation is brilliantly done. There are some gory effects that are bound to scare you, especially if you are uncomfortable with the creepy crawlies. However, there are some moments of nudity and humor to take your mind off the gruesome storyline for a while, with scenes where a human body tears apart from within as roaches burrow in, you will need some form of distraction. The monster at the end of the movie is also well-crafted and pretty intimidating. You can be sure that after watching this film, you will be extra cautious with bugs in your house. Are you ready?